Aloha and welcome to Ehana Kako, which means let's work together. We're a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. We've seen a tremendous change in the political climate here in Hawaii during this season of elections. One of those changes from the usual is that there is vigorous multi-party activity. Not just Democrats, not just Republicans, but Libertarians and now the Independent Party of Hawaii. I'm pleased today to have with us the Lieutenant Governor candidate for the Independent Party of Hawaii, Les Chang, and we're going to talk a little bit about what he hopes to accomplish, what the party stands for, and pretty much what Hawaii needs today. Les, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Well, I'm so Happy glad. to be here. Yes, I'm so <laughs> glad you're here. You know, this is the first thing I'm thinking. You've got a full military career, yeah. you have served in the city, yeah. and you deserve to be on the golf course. So well, why are you throwing your hat into the political race? Well, you know, that's a good question. My wife asked me that first, but before I accepted to be a race, I had to get her permission. Your you wife? Know, my wife, the boss. But, but you know, I've served the public for 38 years in my life, 30 years in the military, two years teaching junior ROTC at Kailo High School, six years working for Mayor Hanneman and his cabinet as the director of Parks and Recreation. And you know, I, I was retired, and, and I was it actually didn't know I could retire and enjoy myself. You know, that's a hard transition after sure. working so hard. But you know, I learned, or it absorbed me, and I was having a good time. And you know, of course, I was always wanting to. The part of me wanted to serve the public within me, and this race came about. And and I had discussions with Mayor Hanneman, and and he said, you know, Les, I'm considering you as one of my lieutenant governor candidates and you know are you interested and and, and so that's sure that's, uh, if you don't mind me asking sure um, it, it doesn't sound as though you yourself said hey I want to <laughs> get out there and stand on corners and wave and signs and so forth you know, it sounds like no. you were approached by someone who said yes. your time has come and I need well, you to run with me is, is that more of the story that, there? That, that, it's sort of that way you know I did stand on uh -huh. corners and waving signs and try to uh, get people to vote for Mayor Hanneman uh, over the last couple of elections, but no, I was never in my mind thought I was going to run for political office. Well, um, now we see a, a new thing on the scene here in Hawaii, at least in, yes. in, in the current Hawaii yes. political climate, uh, not just the Democrat Party, not just the Republican yes. Party, but people now actually know some of the names of the Libertarian Party candidates, yes. and of course, you and Mufi represent the Independent Party of Hawaii. Yes. Well, what exactly <laughs> is that? And let me tell you why. Some yeah, people, sure. some people think, well, maybe that's just Mufi and his friends, no. and not a real party. What, what, well, what do you say to that? Well, you know, the the party was started uh, in actually Maui, and it was co-founded. Um, and now our party chair, uh, Del Rosario, uh, is is in Maui, and and she's actively trying to support the independent party, of course, support her candidates. Um, and Michelle has uh, been a staunch in starting the party earlier this year. And to be honest, I was part of that movement initially and before I was a candidate, uh, trying, to, trying to establish this party because I fully believe uh, that we need options in our, in our choices in government. Um, you know, I'm, I, as a military member, I really probably leaned more to the right, but I never was a Republican. Mm -hmm. um, I always voted for who I thought was the best candidate and voted for issues that I was most concerned with. Um, however, you know, I felt that the last couple years, um, again, when I started campaigning for Mayor Hanneman, I tried to join the Democratic Party, and it was my first sight of, of how that worked or didn't work in my mind. Hmm. And I was a little disappointed. And that's just a personal opinion, just, well, just me speaking. What can one hope to accomplish with a, a brand new startup party? If, as well, I understand yeah. it, there may be at best 2,000 members who sign yeah. petitions. Yeah. But compare that yeah. to the Democratic stronghold. Sure. And uh, even the, the name recognition of Republicans that could make up 28 or 30 percent. Certainly. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish yeah. with, with such a brand well, new party? Well, you know, it, it is a challenge being a brand new party. Um, and if we didn't have my running mate, Mufi Hanneman, as a candidate and with a, a name such recognition as that, sure. it would be very difficult. I mean, to be real honest, uh, if Les Chang was running for lieutenant governor and, and, and just by himself, they would say, who is Les Chang? And I understand that, you know. And I'm not trying to downplay my, my ability or capability of being lieutenant governor, but I understand that. But the independent party, I, I believe, is what most people think 
they think independently. Um, they, they have maybe said I, I'm more democratic in nature or more republican in nature, but most people are sort of in the middle. Sure. And, and they, they, they want to do what they think is right for the people of Hawaii. And I think most of the issues are in a large middle part of the centralist, if you lack of a better word. Now, when you say independent, that, yeah. that's a little bit confusing because Certainly. we don't generally think of independent <laughs> as a party. So yes. are we talking about okay. independence or are we talking <laughs> about a party that well, is named independent? Well, we, 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 have a, we are a part of members of the party uh -huh. called the Hawaii Independent Party. Right. And the party, again, is built on and, and, and will be building as we, hope, as we win governor and lieutenant governor, I think that will be a big segue to make the party a very important part of a choice in this in the in state. But the party itself is believing that the people should have a voice in government. And we have a, a minimalist platform, but it comes really down to listening to the people, taking what they think are important, and then governing from that standpoint. Sure. Not not taking mm -hmm. ideologies that are develop in a, in a, in a par party and, and, and many, many members and we, we basically are out there to deal with the people and listen to their responses. Now, if you were to describe the difference between the Hawaii Independent Party and the other parties, what would <laughs> some of those, you know, a, a handful of those differences be? Well, I think the physical part of it is, is obvious. Sure. The, just the numbers. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we are very small. That doesn't mean that we are not effective or can't govern. Um, so that that itself is different. But if if the party itself, again, we represent the people, and again, as a candidate, which I have to speak as a candidate more than right. as part of the no, party, the party, because party now, now as party yeah. chair or you know as a member of the party, but as a candidate, you know, we, I feel very strong about what we represent because again, we are out there on all the islands every night meeting the people and getting their feedback and we want to really listen to the people and based on that respond sure. and govern. Now you want to represent the voice of the people Certainly. and you say you have a very minimalist list of platform items Right. and in many ways you have some items that Republicans have, some items Certainly. that Democrats have. Certainly. Is it, is the nature of the party really this? an objection to the way things yeah. have been going, to the, yeah. to the tight hold that one party dominance has in the state of Hawaii. Is that part yeah. of the, the yeah. story, the, the call to say we need something different? <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know why the founders of the party, what their personal reasons sure. were. Um, my reason for joining the party was a, a, a little bit of dissatisfaction in what was going on. Okay. And, and, and so that, that is as a member of the party. Um, I, I can't share what the other members feel about being an independent party member, but I know I felt very excited about the party because I felt that there was a mechanism, a vehicle, and if we can grow, that I think should offer a choice in, in Hawaii. Um, you know, I, I, I watched the Republican Party, and I think they had opportunities to grow, and I think they still need to grow, but they haven't. For, for many years. I looked at the Democratic side, and although it's one party, I see that the, in, within itself there are many factions or many interests, which I think is, is understandable. Um, but I feel that they have sort of lost the center balance of serving the people of Hawaii. I, and, I, and I'm not saying that they don't care. I think they're very good individuals. I'm talking about the party now, not individuals. And so the chance of being part of the independent party, although r remotely and small at first, I think is, is fit right into where I was, where I am. Now, being a candidate with Mayor Hanneman and myself, we feel very strongly that we can govern as an independent party for, for many reasons. As, you know, when I worked with him at, in the mayor's office and I was a cabinet member, the mayor was elected as a nonpartisan. He was not, you know, at that time mm -hmm. he was a Democrat, but he wasn't elected on, on the ballot. It said nonpartisan. And so when we governed, he did not worry about Republican or Democrat issues. He worked at people's issues. 
you know, as he said, you know, when we, when we govern, you leave your party at the door, you come in, and let's work with what the people want it to do. Sure. Now, obviously, as you allude to, you're running for lieutenant governor, Certainly. which is yeah. necessarily a supportive role yes. for a governor. Yes. Uh, but what kinds of distinctives do you bring yeah. to the table, you feel, in, either in terms of issues or in terms of qualities, that, that, that gives the public a choice in terms of the team Certainly. of Hanneman and, and Chang? Chang? Well, you know, I think the first thing that I think I have to cover as Les Chang running for lieutenant governor is my qualifications, mm -hmm. because again, I don't think people know my background, um, and I think that's very important for people to feel confident that um, I can be a very supportive lieutenant governor. And first of all, I, I wanted to share my my understanding of the job description of lieutenant governor. Of course, you know he, he or she has to be very capable, and and as the old saying is, one heartbeat away from being the governor. So that's why I think it's very important that people understand my capabilities. But I think the more important thing on a day-to-day -day realistic basis is that he or she, in this case myself, can support the governor. Uh, so let me take that two parts. Let me cover a little bit about where, my, where sure. I come from and my qualifications. Uh, you know, I, I retired from the military serving 30 years uh, in the Air Force. And in the Air Force, a lot of people used to say, did you, did you fly? You know, and in fact, when I was in the mainland or overseas, when I sailed from Hawaii, you know, they always asked if I surfed and did all those things. It's, it's a tip, typical stereotyping. But within the Air Force or the military, it's like a, it's like a community, a, a mini, where every, every aspect of uh, jobs and, and support needs to be done. I was very fortunate to, to be in what they call a personal services or a, a people's business where we provided the services to what I consider the most important resource in the military is this military member and their families. Because if they are not satisfied, kept well and healthy, they cannot do the job, kept the mission. If their family is worried about mm -hmm. their child care or other issues, then the person cannot concentrate on the job. So my role came in in the military was I was developing community programs and ran community programs wherever the installations was. And and from that standpoint, you know, uh, there's four elements that, that I think the experience that I have that are, that are unique to being a retired military officer. One, I had tremendous financial management experience. Um, in a government, you have appropriated funds, taxpayers' dollars, but right. in my case, I also did what was called non-appropriated dollars, where you actually ran a mini business of trying to generate revenues to pay for some of the programs, such as child care centers and the clubs, the golf courses, bowling centers, you name it. Uh, fitness centers, um, had my fingers in almost everything that people do. Um, the second part about that is people management. Um, well, I had organizations as large as 8,000 people work for me. So when you're doing that through an HR organization or whatever, I had the military members, I had the civilian members, I had overseas nationals working for me. So all of that was in a sense, complex. It, it sounds like the logistics that you dealt with, the human relations Logist that you dealt with, the corporate certainly. leadership, corporate leadership. Uh, fit very well when you went to the, the city the, and, and headed parks and recreation and, and, and similarly. That's, you know, with that, so there's a strong management background. Exactly. There. The management, the leadership, the facilities, not only the day-to-day -day maintenance, but figuring out how the capital program, and I'm talking many, many facilities. Some, mm -hmm. some years you have a $100 million budget in, in the capital side, and some of the programs I had but that set me up to be hired by Mayor Hanneman as his Parks and Recreation Director. And you continued in a very complex organization. Yeah, very complex. Yeah. We're going to take a break now, but, but thanks for sharing that background and information. We're, we're with Thank Les you. Chang, who yeah. is Lieutenant Governor candidate for the Hawaii Independent Party. And we'll be coming back right after the short message to talk a little bit more uh, about what he hopes to accomplish along with yeah. Hanneman as they run for the state's top two positions. I'm Kili'i Akina with the Grassroot Institute on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We'll be right back after this. Aloha, my name is Daniel Luke and this is my co-host Tse Ng. We'll be here every other Monday on New Media, The Bleeding Edge on Think Tech talking about the intersection of social media and the news. We'll cover technology, trends, and other fun stuff. Did I leave anything out? Well, I'm here to keep you honest, so that's my job, to remind you of everything you've forgotten and uh, to challenge you at every point. Excellent. My wife tells me that I'm wrong about quite a lot. So, 
Welcome back to Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Uh, today, I'm talking with Les Chang, Lieutenant Governor candidate uh, for, uh, well, for office this year, 2014, running with Mufi Hanneman, who's been on this program before. We're going to dive right back into the conversation and now talk a little bit about what he and uh, his running mate hope to accomplish. Uh, Les, uh, this is uh, an exciting time, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, and well, so Mufi called you, you stepped up to the plate yes. and, and decided to work with him. Uh, what exactly does the team stand for in terms of bringing to Hawaii? What, what, what is it that is the distinctive that the Hanneman Chang team hopes to offer in a yes. future Hawaii? Well, you know, I, I think a lot of it has to do with our, our executive capability. As I was explaining just before the break, uh, the background that I bring, um, you know, joining with Mayor Hanneman, um, we, we feel we're the only team uh, that has the ex ex extensive executive management experience that is required to run the state as, as governor and lieutenant governor. I mean, for instance, the state has over 50,000 employees. It's, it has huge multi-billion dollar budgets. And, you know, and the mayor ran the city and had 10,000 employees and, 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 and multi-million dollar, billion dollar budgets. I ran an organization that had 8,000 employees when I left, when I retired, and had a, a annual revenues of $1.1 billion. And what that, what that says is that we have the experience and what it takes to run large organizations that require fiscal management and, and good, prudent business sense within the government. Because I think that's what the state needs now. Um, you know, I, it, it, just as a matter of comparison, I mean, in the previous administration, there was a person that was the current governor who was in legislative background. And it's a big difference coming as a legislator and then all of a sudden being given the, the reins to run sure. the government. Um, you know, so we feel that we have the executive background. Of course, we feel we can have a new approach to many of the issues that have been struggling and challenging to Hawaii and not come up with the same old, same old. We feel that we, we have the, we're the ones that can make the change and make it happen, not just talk right. about it. Now, Les, I know you're not the one who'll set the policy Certainly. direction. You'll be supportive uh, of yes. the governor's policy right. direction if you're elected. Yes. Yes. But, but if you don't mind, I, I just want to mm -hmm. throw out a, just a, a couple of areas that, that may be germane to the background that you're talking about of administration. Uh, one of the major problems facing the state is our budget for state government as well as the unfunded liabilities we have for our government pension programs, our government health care programs for retirees yeah. and so forth. And it seems as though we're di digging ourselves into a deeper and, and deeper hole. What, what approach do, do, do you and Mufi plan to take that, that, that right. might take advantage of the administrative capacity in order to, to get us out of that hole? Well, you know, again, as a lieutenant governor, I have to overemphasize right. that it's not I'm the one that sets the, the pace, that the governor sets the pace, and I'm there to support him. Um, so in some ways, when I speak about this, I'm not speaking on his behalf. Understood. It is my, my view of, you know, what should be done. I mean, and, and I know Mayor Hanneman, because I worked so closely with him for six years, I know my capabilities, but I, I feel that when you look at the fiscal aspect of it, you know, one of the things is it, it's so hard to understand um, if are we in a deficit or are we got is there know, a surplus? surplus. And, and, and that's, that's one thing. So, you know, I, I don't want to use that there's mirrors, but I think you have to have a better understanding of what's there. And, and everyone uses the word transparency. So I'll use it also, but I, I, I mean it in a sense that you cannot make executive decisions in the dark. You cannot decide on important things um, without knowing where you are. So I think that's very important that we get our hands on what is there. I mean, and that way you can then prioritize what you're doing and Certainly. take on the things that we, we feel that are important. But you have to get an assessment of where you are. I'm not talking about taking an audit. It, overall, we may have to look at certain things. I know when the mayor came in, to the city and when he took over and I was a department head and I heard about he brought in these the, the, the uh, 
review team of, of people, not taxpayer dollars. And at first I said, well, why are we doing this? And then I realized the wisdom of that afterwards because they were able to see it with fresh eyes, look at where we were, reprioritize and give suggestions to the mayor. And, and, I, and I welcome that. At first, you know, there's resistance to having that approach because you think, gee whiz, you know. And of course, I was also the new director, but the people that I worked with, there was a lot of concern. But sure. there was a lot of wisdom in that because it gave us a great roadmap on where to go and what to do. And I think that's what we need to do in the state. I mean, there, it's, it's, there's so much going on, but are we all understanding where it's going and is that where we want to go? What do you think what, one of the most important problems we have in Hawaii is that, that government can do something about? We have government, and, and it's certainly trying to pave roads. It's certainly trying to, to make elections go smoother. And all of these issues are important. But, but what's a very important thing we, have to, we can expect our government to take care of, or we should expect, and the government can do? Well, you know, I think I have to go a little philosophical on that, mm -hmm. because I think what is government? Government is for the people. Right. And I think that what is most important is the physical things of paving a road, fixing this park, doing that, that's all important. But I think what the government needs to do is it's the only one that can look at an issue and respond to something that individuals can't do. It's the only one that can look at it in the bigger picture and involve private community and government and, and go ahead and work on something that is important to the community. So I think government is the, the glue of, of all of that for the community benefit, the common ground for the common good. How can we use government in, in a way to build our economy? Uh, right now, I, I don't know about yeah, you, but I've right. got, we have four children. Yeah, Three sure. of them are on sure. the mainland and not likely sure. to come back That's until perfect. they can afford yeah. that house here yeah. in Hawaii. It's <laughs> seven hundred thousand yeah. sure. dollars. By that time, it's probably a million dollars, and right. and so forth. We all know the cost of right. living here, housing, fuel, sure. Sure. Uh, everything. You know, what role can government play? What would well, you you and Mufi like to see take you know, place? I think. When we talk about government, it's always cut, cut, cut to meet the budget. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, as, as my previous background that I alluded to, part of the business aspect of it is to grow the economy, as well as to, to be sure whatever you're spending is most efficient in what you're doing and you're not wasting the dollars. I mean, to me, a taxpayer's dollars is my dollars and it's your dollars and it's everyone's dollars. And so you have to look at it like it's not a, you know, uh, unlimited account. You have to look at it like it's your own money, you know, because it is our money. And, and I, so I want to see it being used efficiently. But you have to grow the economy also. And and so you know, again, tourism is our, our. But you have to grow that in a sense that there's other opportunities. You know, I'm really happy to work with Mayor Hanneman because he has all that background, being part of that industry and have worked at, and he has more contacts in the Asian Pacific area than I think most people would realize, and, and we have to look at that aspect to grow our economy, just not within. So sure. I think that reach, that connections that he has, with, I think will, will help us grow the economy. Um, there's, you know, agriculture is, is kind of a sleeping giant here, and I think the diversified agriculture has to, has to grow and move. And let's not forget the military. I mean, the military, we can't take it for granted that they're here. That's our second major, I hate to use the word industry, but from a standpoint of revenues coming into the state, that's the second leading entity. And so we can't take that for granted. And with my background as being the only veteran in the gubernatorial lieutenant governor's race, I had a, a tremendous amount of expertise and connectivity that I think that will ease that and, and, and keep that connection and understanding, bring it into the state executive office. Mm, very good. Now, what about education here? I, I think yeah. that, that's a growing uh -huh. concern of all yeah. of us. And, sure and we've witnessed over the past few years yeah. uh, attempts to bring about systemic change yeah. that, that 
that are somewhat baffling to the public as right. in terms of whether or not we're getting right. bottom line results. It, yeah. what, what is the, yeah. your, your thought and standing well, on the education issue, Hawaii you know, public schools? You know, I'm very proud to say I'm a, a public school mm -hmm. product. I mean, I'm Palolo Elementary, Jared Intermediate, and Kaimaki High School graduate, and of course the University of Hawaii. So, you know, my heart is into public education. And, you know, I, 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 and I also spent two years in between these jobs teaching at, at Kailo High School. And, you know, there, there are so many outstanding professional teachers that I know out there. And I know the administrators, and they're all working hard and trying hard. But, you know, it's very frustrating, I think, they feel that, they're, you know, it's, they're not able to teach with, with the energy and the time that they're given with, with the students. And I think that's very important. And you know, everyone's saying decentralized, and, and, and I think we, we're all for that. But, but you know, I think there's a, a notional bit about we understand the education system. I think just, just to say, I'm a product. I've been in schools. Mayor Hanneman goes to the schools, 25 to 30 schools every year, from read aloud programs. He offers scholarships out of his pocket. He does a book award, and he also takes a team all-star girls on a scholarship, uh, excuse me, on a team to play basketball. But the reason I say that is that we, we think that's the most important thing. When he was mayor, and I was one of the departments, but he always said the number one job I have as a mayor is public security, so, excuse me, first responders. Educa ed yes. And then as the governor, my number one responsibility is going to be education. So that's going to be up on our plate. And, and he has many ideas, and it, I don't think it's for me to s explain some of his ideas, but I support it 100%. And, you know, Hawaii, w I'm very proud of the education, public education system. And I, and I do want to share one story that I think mufi has been talking about. You know, two years ago, he, w he was at Moloka High School, and one of the students there said, you know, I want to go to Harvard. And, you know, everyone, you know, he knew Mufi was a graduate of Harvard. And, you know, and Mufi tells the story, says his story, he said, you know, at first I thought, gee, how can a, 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 a young man from Molokai High School go to Harvard? But he said, who am I to hold that against him? When my mom told me when I was in Kalihi that I want you to go to Harvard when I was fourth, fourth grade. Bottom line is that he found the support of his teachers, his parents. He gave them some advice on what to do, come to school here in the summertime. He gave them some assistance in a job at the summertime. And guess what? He went to Harvard history from Molokai High School, and he's still there doing well, and Mufi just saw him when he visited the island uh, a month ago. So, you know, that really opens my heart to know what people can do. And in my year, when I was there, just many years ago, you know, my friends, one of them went to MIT, the other one went to Brown. Of course, they went to the University of Hawaii, but, you know, nothing wrong with the public school. I think it's the application of the student and the support that the governor, the lieutenant governor, needs to give to the schools to give the teachers and the principals what they need to invigorate, educate, encourage success. How do we bring some of the disparate parties, the, the, the different groups that have their hands as stakeholders in our education system, how do we bring them together? For example, there's got to be a working relationship between mm. the, 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 the public and the union, oh. the government and the unions. And, and, and oftentimes things come to a stalemate because of the inability to bring these groups together. Your thoughts? Well, you know, it, it's, again, one of the reasons I'm running with Mayor Hanneman, and I'm so excited about this, is his leadership style mm -hmm. of collaboration. And I think that I've seen him in action working, pulling people together and, and working the issues out, um, you know, looking at from a management standpoint in this case, or if you want to look at it from a labor standpoint, administration, teachers, looking at it from the funding aspect. But I think what's important is getting out there and leading and, and, and supporting it. One of the other, I'll share another idea because he's been espousing this often, is that when he chooses the Board of Education Direct, uh, he wants to ensure that they all will guarantee him that they'll visit a school at least once a month mm -hmm. because he feels it's very important that if they're going to make key decisions on schools, 
they can't just be reading a report or hearing notional reports. Right. They have to actually go into schools. And that's one of the reasons why he did his scholarship. He, he, he goes to the schools and gets the feedback from the mm -hmm. principal. So I think that in itself, by the leadership style, getting out there and looking at with the focus on what's best for our children and our young, young people, I think you can't go wrong with that. Thank you. We're going to be back in just a moment for a final segment today on Ehana Kako with Lieutenant Governor Candidate Les Chang. Uh, but first, let me say thank you to Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network and all of the wonderful staff, the team, Jay Fidel, the producer. You're doing a great job. And for those of you watching, you can access Think Tech Hawaii content, which we produce about 25 hours a week from this studio in Honolulu. You can see it at www.thinktechhawaii.org or .com, thinktechhawaii.com. We'll be right back after this short message. Don't go away. Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Josh Green. I'm the host of a program called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'm a physician. I work in the emergency department on the Big Island. I also serve in the state senate, which please don't hold that against me, doesn't detract from my television program. We speak about all the big health care issues in the state. We get together on Tuesdays from 2 o'clock till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We try to talk about the most important issues in health care. This is a terrific venue for people to learn about health care. There are many programs on this, on this station. We broadcast it later, uh, not just on the Internet, but also on OC16. Thanks for joining us. Please be informed health care consumers. Welcome back to Ehana Kako. And by the way, that means let's work together, which is a constant theme we have at the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. We're grateful that Think Tech Hawaii allows us to come on weekly and interview movers and shakers. Uh, toward that end, working together to build a better Hawaii. Uh, you know, if for or those of you who have seen our program over the last several weeks, we have interviewed candidates from the various parties, Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, and now today the Independent Party of Hawaii, uh, for whom uh, Les Chang is Lieutenant Governor candidate, and Mufi Hanneman, whom we've had on the program, is the gubernatorial candidate. We're going to conclude our time together by talking a little bit more about something that Les has raised as an important distinctive he feels of, of his team, and that is leadership. Yeah. Well, Les, you've talked about leadership. Yeah. You've talked about your background. You've yeah. talked about Mufi as a leader. Yeah. But we all know that here in Hawaii, uh, leading is not the easiest thing in the world. We are no. a diverse state. Yeah. We have the one part of the beauty of Hawaii. Yes, it is the beauty of Hawaii. It, it is the, the blending together of yes. people who come from yeah. all backgrounds, all points of view. Yes. And sometimes that puts us at, at uh, odds with one another. You've seen it in the past political season, uh, whether it's faith-based or otherwise, yeah. wh whether it's certain civil liberties or those who have a different view, wh whether right. it is unions or non-unions, whether it's the Hawaiian activism yeah. or sovereignty uh, activists and, and the rest of the population. Uh, and, of course, I don't put everyone into one category or, or, or the other. Perfect. How do you govern? In, in the midst of such uh, plurality of, of perspective? You know, it's, uh, I, I have to go back to my experiences. Um, I think that, you know, leadership is it's not innate in a sense. I think leadership is gaining the trust and respect of the people that you're working with. I mean, you know, in the military I was given positions and titles and, and authority, but you have to earn the respect of the people you're working with and working for you to get anything done effectively. Um, without that, uh, you, can, you can be the officer or you can be the commander, but if they don't support you, you know, you're not going to get the maximum effort of that organization. And I think so leadership is paramount, I think, in anything you do when you're dealing with management of any numbers of people. It would be from two people on to thousands of people. And I think I've observed Mayor Hanneman. I know my leadership style, and I feel very strongly we're not the same. We, 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 we approach things differently, and I think that's also important. But, but I, I know that I see how effective he is and how effective I have been. Sure. And that's just, again, it's by our proven record. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't like to say this too much, but, you know, it wasn't automatic to get promoted in the military. And you had to show continually 
ability for potential to do the next level job and given extra responsibility because they don't promote people based on you worked hard or you're just having to be here a little longer than the next guy. It was all by merit. And so that's where I think we have a distinct advantage or where I think the state needs us now um, because of our ability to sure. work with people. Whatever the diverse issues are, to be able to, to get to listen to everyone's divergent issues, concerns, sometimes passionate, sometimes, you know, however they come across. And, and, you know, I like people who really feel strongly about something because it's important to them. If it's important to them, it's important to me. But from there, how do you take that and govern it into some kind of a policy or some kind of action that is resulting that is acceptable to most people? And, and again, you know, that's the challenge, you know, to have common, sure, common, to get well, the common good. You know, let, let me ask you a specific then. Certainly. Can, so you can kind of flesh out how that philosophy of collaboration mm -hmm. and leadership would, would work. Sure. And it's in an area you might be familiar with, and indeed yeah. are, because you were the head of Parks and Recreation Certainly. for the City and County Certainly. of Honolulu. Certainly. Today we have a growing homelessness problem. Certainly. In, in, throughout the state of yes. Hawaii, especially on Oahu. Mm -hmm. And I, I would think it's safe to say nobody wants the homeless problem, but no. the solutions are not agreed upon. On, no. on one hand, there's, there is the movement that our city ordinances have now reflected, a, a more of a tough love approach, mm -hmm. in, in that it's get them off the streets, mm -hmm. get them, them moved out of the areas that would be bad for business and so forth. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, there is the sentiment that says mm -hmm. that's inhumane mm -hmm. and that we need to meet their needs in a more mm -hmm. humane way way. Right. How would you manage these two? I right. chose to ask you that rather Certainly. than the GMO, anti-GMO. Okay. Well, that, those, are, those are diversive also. But, you know, I have to go back on the, uh, my experience as the parks director, and, and I have to flashback people because the current situation, although similar, there are they're, they're always differences. In my case, um, that basically we had to look at the parks. The communities, everywhere I went, said, I want my park back. I don't feel comfortable for my child to go even to the restroom. Even when they were there with their child participating in youth sports, you know, people said, you know, I used to be able to come here and have my birthday parties. I used to come to the park. It's no longer available to me. So, it, it, you know, there was no, cho no easiness on how to deal with this. Because again, you know, it wasn't a matter from my perspective as the parks director of removing homeless. My perspective was to make the parks as accessible, clean, and safe for everyone. Everyone. No, no, no one excluded and no, no one, you know, no particular group to, to, to focus on. But one of the challenges was the homeless. So Mayor Hanneman was very concerned about that. I mean, he, he, he made sure that we just didn't just go in there. So we, with, it, with the cabinet, we had good community service aspect. We used HPD. We made rules. We basically set a path on, on cleaning up the parks, not cleaning up homeless, because it was a very comprehensive, focused plan. Um, but when it dealt to the homeless, we started off with saying, OK, we'll give them two weeks' notice. And we found out that wasn't enough. And we decided to give them 30 days' notice. And then we got to the point where we were giving them 120 days' notice. And in that period, we energized, exercised, encouraged anyone that could give these people help, whether it be public or private. So, so that was it. But when we came to the date, and we never did it in the midnight in the dark, we always said 9 o'clock Monday morning is a typical time. The park is closing for maintenance. And everyone has to leave. Everything has to be removed. And, and so when we went in there at 9 o'clock, in most cases, they moved. And many of them went to a better place. Shel people would, went to shelters, et cetera. You know, but my issue was then to have a focused maintenance program. We went in there. I pulled maintenance people from all over the island because I said, we, we did this park in the windward side. Next time we'll do one on the leeward side. So basically everybody got their share. But what we did was not just 
we, we, we went and made over the, the comfort station. We took all the plumbing fixtures out, even if they were still working, put all brand new or refurbished ones in. We painted everything, fixed everything up, put trees in where there weren't trees, fixed all the picnic benches, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we looked at the whole comprehensive park in one week and we reopened it. But what's more important, and the, the two key factors is we had provisions to keep that park clean. But the biggest part of that was the community asking us to do this to start with, was with us in many cases doing the cleanup, and most important, stayed with us after yeah. the cleanup. And, and those communities that continually do that, you will see that the parks are, are still sure. best shaped. So again, it's the aspect of hearing the community and getting the community involved. We've got time for, for, for one last question. Sorry, Sorry yes. Uh, no, it's quite all right. Um, I, you described a type of management that, that would, of course, be quite appropriate to a role of, of, of city uh, manager or the mayor. But now, z zoom sure. ahead. Let's Certainly. say we're talking about the governorship Certainly. and lieutenant governorship, and you prob I would guess you've had some conversations with Mufi about what kind of role mm -hmm. the lieutenant governor Certainly. would play. Um, Benjamin Franklin said the, the vice president should be entitled yeah. his superfluous excellency. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, what yeah. would you see, just quickly, as, as the role the lieutenant governor should play? You know, I, I think one of the beauties that Mufi and I worked together six years, so he knows my strengths, he knows my weaknesses, I know his strengths, and I know what he expects out of me. So that, that's, that's the good part, because in a lot of cases, the lieutenant governor gets put in his office, and he's only called on when needed. Right. I plan to be, and I'm going to be offering myself to be very active in the administration. And Mayor Hanneman, is, is, we've talked about possible duties that I'll have. Like, of course, as the military says, as a sign. And I know that whatever given, I would do my best and make it better than was given. But we talked about some specific things based on my background. Of course, the military liaison, looking at all the veteran affairs. We have about 120,000 veterans on, in the state and, and, and making sure that the linkage of what they, they have in the state is, is done very well, and as well as linking them with any other services in the federal, federal sector. Um, looked at possibly uh, being a little liaison in the University of Hawaii because I'm, I'm a graduate, and of course, I'd be very passionate for that. Uh, looked at maybe because some of my other backgrounds and non appropriate funds and other things, uh, assisting the nonprofits a little more mm -hmm. uh, because I think that there's some frustration out there in that area. And, and people don't understand that the nonprofits play a big role in Hawaii. Right. You know, not only, not only in the services that they provide that some government agencies are not, but they employ a lot of people and they also offer employment opportunities for people, job, job programs. So, so we want to make sure that that segment of the of, is not overlooked. So we talked about maybe give it under the oversight of the lieutenant governor. So and, and a few others, but but I guess what I'm trying to say is that we're actively looking at how I can share some of the load off of the governor, and and we can work as a team, and and then again serve the people of Hawaii the best we can. Well, very good, Les. It's been great talking with you today, and uh, certainly. I appreciate the fact that you're willing to serve. You're appreciate, I appreciate the fact you're willing to yes. throw your hat into the rank uh, yes. and, and see what takes place. And, and, and you're giving Hawaii another choice, another option. Yes. Well, I want to thank you. Thank you, Fidel, and everyone in here for wonderful hospitality and giving me this opportunity. Thanks very much. Aloha. This is uh, Think Tech Hawaii's weekly program called Ehana Kako. I hope <coughs> you enjoyed talking with Les Chang, candidate for lieutenant governor in the Independent Party of Hawaii. I'm Kaylee Akina with the Grassroot Institute. Until next week, Ehana Kako, let's work together. Aloha. Let's work together. <laughs>